The funeral of a father of two from Essex who plunged to his death while parasailing in Turkey has taken place in Colchester. 50-year-old Glenn Hudson was on a tandem parasail with his daughter Emma. His family believe his death was caused by a faulty harness and are taking legal action. Laura Burns reports. They should be celebrating this week, not saying goodbye. But today, almost 25 years since her wedding day, Linda Hudson was at her husband's funeral. Less than a month ago, they were on a family holiday in Turkey. This photo taken moments before 50-year-old Glenn and his daughter Emma went on their first tandem parasail together. It would also be their last. Just days after they returned to England, she told me how she was feeling. Harnesses aren't that expensive to buy, and it just feels to me like my, my dad's life it was more than like the cost of a harness. Today, the family were too distraught to speak on camera. Emma at her mother's side, joined by her grandmother and brother. Glenn's brother reading a poem as a tribute. Laugh as we always laugh at the little texts we enjoy together. Play, smile, think of me. And think of him they did, particularly when the song Golden Brown came on. Glenn used to sing Linda Brown instead, after his wife's maiden name. Although obviously extremely upset, today the family welcomed us here, keen to highlight a tragedy they say could have been averted. They're now working with their legal team to try and get justice. Turkish police are also investigating, and the family vowed to put an end to similar incidents abroad. Today, though, was not about that. Simply those closest to Glenn mourning their loss and celebrating his life. Laura Burns, Anglia News, Colchester. A teenager has been struck by lightning at the Lowestoft Air Festival. The 13-year-old boy was injured just after 1 o'clock this afternoon. He was taken to the James Paget Hospital in nearby Galston, suffering from a minor burn, and he's expected to make a full recovery. Norwich-based insurance company Aviva has rejected a £5 billion bid for its general insurance arm. The bid for Aviva, formerly known as Norwich Union, came from the RSA Group, the company behind more than insurance. It was immediately rejected by the Aviva board. Crime in Suffolk is at its lowest in a decade, according to a new report by the county's police force. The number of antisocial behaviour incidents were reduced by a thousand in the last year. Targets in managing 999 calls and detecting drug trafficking were exceeded. Colin Spence, who became chairman in April, says he's proud of the progress that's been made. One of the highlighted areas that the public have really underlined with us is their concern about antisocial behaviour. And, and there's been a number of effort to try and uh, deliver uh, improved results. In football, Ipswich Town opened their home campaign in the Championship against one of the teams relegated from the Premier League. And Norwich City are on the road against the club. Many say are the favourites to go down into League One. Donovan Blake previews the weekend games. <laughs> Big announcement at Norwich in the last hour, but it's matters on the pitch which concern the manager Paul Lambert. He watched his strikers Grant Holt and Chris Martin open their accounts with two goals each in the Carlin Cup in midweek. Now with Canadian Simeon Jackson to accommodate, Lambert is spoilt for striker options for his team to face Scunthorpe. The way they play the game has, has been great for me. They're a threat, there's no doubt. If you give them a chance, they'll, they'll score. I think that teams will know that. If we get a chance, we'll, we'll score. Roy Keane should give a debut to Andros Townsend, signed from Spurs on loan, while the future of Jonathan Walters continues to be a hot topic, even though Town have yet to accept a bid to sell him. Troy Brown is another early season casualty, so resources are stretched as they host Burnley. That's why we're desperate for reinforcements, because of the players we've lost, whether it be I sold them or we left our contracts run out. And the fact we've a few serious injuries at the club, so um, no, they need a bit of support. Now will Colchester fans turn out in force for the U's first home game in League One against one of English football's big names, Sheffield Wednesday. They're starting their third season at the Western Homes Community Stadium. The history of the club says that it's not going to be filled on a regular basis, but we've got to work hard to make people want to come. I think the access route will be open by Christmas as well, which will be even better for people to get in and out of the ground. At Peterborough, Aaron McLean could be involved in their game at Bournemouth, despite being stretched off in their midweek Carling Cup win. And in League Two, Matthew Patterson could be the man to fire Southend to their first league win at Aldershot, after scoring twice in their shock Carling Cup win over Bristol City. Donovan Blake, 
and Glee News. And don't go anywhere because we'll be hearing more about that big announcement at Norwich in just a few moments. Members of Great Britain's women's gymnastics squad will be boosting their preparations for the forthcoming World Championships at an event in Ipswich this weekend. They're competing in a two-day international against Romania. Britain's world champion Beth Tweddle was among the gymnasts who took part in practice sessions at the Pipers Vale Gymnastics Club today. The team and all-round competition take place tomorrow with the apparatus finals on Sunday. Now, she was rejected by her mother and facing an uncertain future, but things are looking up for a little foal called Ruby. The conic pony was born in the herd at Wickenfen near Ely. She's now being cared for at the World Horse Welfare Centre at Snetterton in Norfolk. It's hoped she'll be returned to the herd when she's a little older. Now we've got breaking news from Norwich City Football Club. Within the past hour, it's been announced that Stephen Fry has become a director at the club. A long-standing Norwich fan and a regular at Carrow Road, the Norfolk-based writer and broadcaster held a press conference with Delia Smith and the rest of the Norwich board. Here's what he had to say. To be here now uh, as a director is simply, I have to pinch myself, it's an extraordinary feeling and I feel honoured and uh, I intend to do my very best to, to make my position on the board something that means something to the club and helps it in any way that it needs to be helped. Well, we can bring you the full story on that now with our correspondent Malcolm Robertson, who is at Carrow Road. Malcolm. Well, Becky, I have to say one of the more entertaining press conferences of football club uh, I've noticed. And with me is uh, Delia Smith, of course, the majority shareholder, and Norwich City's newest director, Stephen Fry. <coughs> Hello. I can't believe you introduced me as a director of Norwich City Football Club, but it's true, and I have to pinch myself to remind myself that it's true. Now, I read you tweeting this afternoon along with 1.7 million others that you regard this as one of the most exciting afternoons in your life. Is it really that? Well, it is. I mean, I'm sure others can understand why. You know, you, you, I grew up here in Norfolk and, and you know, Carrow Road was a, a place of adventure and an exci uh, exciting prospect. The idea that you'd ever belong, as it were, the other side of, uh, of it, behind where, where things go on, where decisions are made and, and it, it just would never cross my mind. And, and it's... There's something, there's something about a football club. It's unlike anything else. It's unlike, you know, some people may say they get their kicks from owning a horse or a boat or, or for being a part of a, you know, a syndicate that, uh, you know, races greyhounds or whatever it might be. But I don't think there's anything quite like the feeling that you're a director of a football club and, and a football club like Norwich. I mean, Delia and Michael um, have transformed Norwich City's fortunes over the last 10 years since they've been on the board. And, they've, and you know, everyone knows in, in Norfolk and, and all supporters around the world know what a debt they owe and but it's um, still a club 23 million pound in debt and people say will yeah. you be putting your hand <laughs> <in the box?" laughs> i won't be finding 23 million i'm afraid at least not of my own but i might i might certainly might do my i will do my best to try and um you know try and persuade people i know who who, who might have that kind of money <laughs> to to involve themselves in the club but m more also around around the world and around Britain, and including those followers you mentioned on Twitter and other such things, to, to make them think about how maybe they want to, might want to be a Norwich City supporter. It's a, it's a great club, and there are plenty of people who haven't really committed to the idea of actually laughing and crying and cheering every Saturday at a, at a club. You know, there are a lot of people who don't, don't stop for the final results and don't stop, have a text service telling them what's going on with their club. And once they discover the, the real pleasure of being a, a wholehearted supporter of a club, um, I, I think it, it can really make your life different. And, and Norwich is the kind of club that is worth supporting because it's so much part of a community. And it just, you know, usually when I say I support Norwich, people smile. Now, it's not a smile necessarily of complete admiration. There's a kind of, ah, oh, bless. But you know, that's a wonderful thing. Because when we win, it's such, such an exciting moment, isn't it? There's nothing like it. Um, whereas if you're a Manchester United or an Arsenal supporter, you expect to win. And it's going to be, yeah, yeah, there should have been an extra goal. You know, they get so angry all the time. And obviously, we can get angry as a Norwich City supporter sometimes. And things don't always go your way. So, yeah, what do you think Stephen will bring to the boardroom? A bit of fun, I would imagine. Well, yes, we've already had lots of fun. And... Um, <laughs> I think football is a very serious thing, so it's good to have some humour, but it's also good to have somebody with a lot of nous and a lot of intelligence and a lot of ideas, and also somebody who travels the world and can become an ambassador for Norwich and um, meet with supporters around the world and um, encourage people, as Stephen said, 
football is so good. You know, we need to spread the spread the message. Okay. Thank you very much indeed. You're of course Scunthorpe tomorrow. You're yeah. hoping for a win. All very well, sir. And so from Delia and Stephen, resplendent with his Norwich City tie and also Norwich City shirt. Well so spotted. he's a director already. <laughs> Thank you. He's already